Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I'm the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. And I'm NV Jetters. And Chibi Nubu is not able to join us this week, but that's okay. Where we, well, hopefully they got to watch this stuff because uh, we had a couple things happen this week. Interesting. Well, should we ask, Gav, you weren't here last week. So, what was, what were your thoughts on some of the stuff that happened? Um, well, I thought it was very, I guess, like, heartfelt, the, um, Steinsgate episodes. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, with that whole thing with, um, finding out Suzuha, like, was a you know, John Teeter and um that Daru was her father and all that stuff. Yeah. And then for Kanata, um with the whole Chars being the traitor. I told you. Yeah. Um and all that jazz. Lots and, of jazz. Yeah. So I was very ready for these next episodes. Yeah. So let's get into those episodes. Uh, so we didn't get one. Uh, we didn't get a cop craft last week. But we got one this week, um, and it was about what was it about? <laughs> it was um, well. The episode started out with. Uh with another bang as another mayoral candidate got assassinated and they spent the first part of the episode trying to track down his killer. Yeah. Not the person I thought who was going to get assassinated, but, you know, we we knew he was going to come back into the plot at some point. Yeah. And I think they found a magic gun that turned into a camera. Yep. Yep. And that's pretty much it. And there was some stuff about race relations. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a it was a Sumerian or the people called them an alien that killed another human, and so tensions are. But it great. wasn't. But it was a human. Is, as it turns out, a magic using human. Yep. Yeah. So now humans can use magic too. I mean. Elves can use science, I guess. Yeah, that was their whole thing. Yep. I don't, I don't know what to to do with the series right now because it's like, I get that. I guess they're trying to say some stuff with it, but I don't know if there's like a political message or some sort of like social message going on here. But I feel like it's a message that we've seen a lot. Well, at least we in America have seen a lot of. I don't know about in Japan, but um, I feel like we all kind of know beat for beat what the story is at this point. Uh, and it just doesn't go back to the plot very often, which makes me a little bit a little sad because I was more interested in the crazy wizards and whatnot. And Carmen Despacito hasn't shown up yet. If they would have focused more on the dynamic between the different race relations from the very beginning, then it could have been a lot more impactful. But like yes. you said, the first three yes. or four episodes were, a, you know, a, a murder mystery or a, or supernatural or something like that. It really didn't. It it, 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 it the different worlds, but in the sense of, oh, these magical creatures are in our world and we're just had to deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, it feels tacked on, and it's a subject that shouldn't be tacked on. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It's just like I also like, thought that. Did you guys also thought this episode was kind of weirdly animated at times? Like it felt a little janky. I mean, I didn't really notice anything myself. Oh. You got any specifics? I don't know. It felt like... You remember how episode three, it felt weirdly animated at times? I kind of felt like that this episode for some reason. I don't remember for sure. 
maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I'm just... I'm missing the plot. Is the main thing for me. It's like, okay, we're getting plot elements. It's like half the episode is devoted to plot elements, and another half is devoted to tacked-on storyline elements. Which, again, I've seen other places and better. Yeah. It's a shame, because it's like, I, I really liked how the show began. I mean, it was very... Yeah, uh, yeah it's like they got their first storyline out of the way. It was the best one. <laughs> yeah, and I hate to say, I think we brought this up. It's kind of falling into that seasonal anime kind of thing where it's like, look at that, we got three episodes of pop, and then it just kind of peters out. I'm worried about the ending now. I feel like it's not going to be a good ending. Either that it'll... It's a shame Shibby is here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame Shibby New isn't here because because we did get a little bit of uh the lore dump that they were well not a full lore dump, but a little bit of lore going on with the uh Fair Feho Faffy Viva Vibuba Steel. Just call it the Fairy Steel. The Valerian Steel, yeah. And um yeah, the mithril and her mithril armor and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, we're still not getting like much on like what these creatures are, how they work. I know everyone calls them ETs and aliens and whatnot, and you got like a probably race riots that are going to happen soon. And essentially, what is I'm assuming some sort of equivalent of L.A. You know, I get that they're. Uh, creating some kind of like parallels and whatnot with American politics and race relations stuff like that. I just don't feel like Japan has enough experience with those to really know how to showcase them in a way that's as compelling as we have here. Yeah, which again is a shame because it it that just makes it feel tacked on when you had a good story to begin with with the uh, buddy cop. Uh, essentially, like, do you, I don't know if I mentioned this before. Do you, did you guys see Bright on Netflix? Yep. Yeah, it was like that. Th this show is like that, but good. Except in regard to, again, the race relation things, they still don't quite get that. I don't know what it is. Maybe there's just a bad allegory here whenever you make them fantasy creatures. Maybe. In any case, the, the cop elements were handled better for the most part throughout the series. Yeah. Um, Do we have any predictions for how this thing is going to go down? Uh, they're kind of hinting that uh, Carmen Despacito is the one kind of pulling the strings of these elections or something like that. So maybe he wants that that one candidate to become the mayor so he can be like a puppet and i imagine the former candidate's wife is on it as well so yeah, maybe it's definitely guilty of something it, maybe it's like a giant political conspiracy but then again why was he involved in the beginning with all those fairy bombs yeah i mean clearly the guy's trying to create, create some kind of social and political unrest between the elves and the people and I guess to what end is like he gets an undead army maybe or something I don't know it's I feel like I, I, I kind of wish like the the big plot had been seeded in throughout the rest of the series a little bit better and I feel like that would have helped us going into uh, the end of this a little bit yeah I feel As like is, I'm Oh, go ahead. What was that? I said I feel like the back six episodes have been pretty lackluster. Like, the first yeah. five episodes I thought were really great. And then episode six was a filler episode I thought was hilarious. So I excused it. But then, like, I, the last six episodes were like... I don't know. They just feel kind of lacking in some way. I don't mind a filler episode every now and then. But I feel like the main of this should have been a plot-driven 
story, and it wasn't for the most part, which is sad because you had a good plot, a good premise, a good little area that you could work in, and they really didn't do as much as I was hoping that they would with it. Okay, you know, we're not at the end of the series yet. They could turn around. I doubt they're going to turn it around in two episodes and just make a huge, awesome finale that's going to tie up all the loose ends and give us all the information that we want about all this stuff. It just doesn't feel like they seeded enough information into it. This is like a... It's, it's turning into a bit of a middle-of-the-road kind of like, I'm not going to remember this kind of anime. Which is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Because at least when something's bad, I remember it pretty well. <laughs> um, any other thoughts on it? I think I said my piece. Like, here's the problem: I'm having trouble remembering some of the some of what happens in the episode. Like, that's that's a bad sign. Yeah. I mean, I'm willing to finish it. I'm willing to see how it ends for at least this season. And well, we really can't pick up something else now, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we were kind of stuck with this as soon as we picked it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, final thoughts on it? This episode or the rest of the series? Um... I don't know. I hope it turns around. Like, I hope they get back into the whole, like, Carmen Despacito. <laughs> um, and if there's anything to, like, maybe they'll tie that together with, like, this past episode. I don't know. Um, I have a feeling they probably will. Because, um, like, they mentioned the, like, candidates for mayor before in episodes. So that was yeah. kind of setting it up for this. So it's not like this episode is, like, totally, like, out of the ballpark. No, you're right. So I'm hoping maybe that has something to tie into, like, the rest of the plot that they set up. Um, and, yeah, I just... I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'm hoping that they spend two episodes on on resolving it. It's like a double feature kind of end of this all. Uh, which, I mean, I don't know how they wouldn't do that at this point. But if the next episode like is just a separate plot again, which I'm a little worried that it will be. Uh, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll have to find out. Um... This episode, I like. I realize like we do the and it is like, is it a yay? Is it a nay? I'm starting to get into that kind of feeling of like maybe we just got to give some of them an uh. <laughs> this was an eh episode. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see by the end and see what um see whether we give the overall series a yay or a nay by the end. But yeah, we'll finish up with the... Uh, well, not finish up, but episode 11 will be next week. Yep. Um, moving on, let's get to the actual good good stuff. Uh, Kanata ended. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. 10 out of 10. 10, 10 out, out of 10. 10. 10 out of 10 would bang. <laughs> <laughs> well, people did probably bang in this episode. Oh, they uh, definitely banged. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about... You wanna talk about uh, you wanna, <laughs> <laughs> you just said a few seconds ago a show that ended properly and answering all the questions, providing all the information. Boom, boom, and boom. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. can I get my complaint out of the way? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'm gonna get my complaint out of the way, then I'm gonna gush. So just fair warning to everyone. Uh, my one complaint, and it's my complaint from last time, was where apparently everybody was totally just on board with the whole. Yeah, let's just not um talk about the fact that we all came from another planet and everyone was just cool with it yeah i figured that was going to be your complaint if you had any 
I'm like, I guess I get how you did it. I just don't see how that many people agreed to it. I they mean, just took it to their graves. Yeah. At least it's a lot less people than we thought before. Yeah, because I guess they, like, destroyed a good portion of the population. But then, e like, everyone who was left was just like, yeah, everybody, shh, don't tell your kids. And yeah. now they do, and they just died out. I'm like, I don't buy that. I just don't. I don't. But whatever. Yeah, I, Who, I cares? Mean, yeah, I, Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> it is hard to believe, but I guess it's just one of those things you have to walk past. Yeah. Um, did you guys have any complaints? I feel like there's going to be very few complaints, so let's get them out of the way. Nope, that's that's all that I was really thinking about in regards to like that kind of thing. Yeah, that's the only thing I saw that I was even remotely questioning. Otherwise, yeah, everything else was perfect to me. So let's get to the plot then. Uh... They're coming back on Earth. And... Oh, God. What, what, what all happened? Okay, so first first off, we had to get Charles to, to explain everything. He, he gives us a big old exposition dump that, that we needed for the end. Yep. Um, we get some arm jokes. <laughs> we have to have some arm jokes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Kanata being a badass because they're like, you need to stay in bed. And oh my God, we didn't have anesthetic for him. So he was like in pain the whole time while we did surgery on him. But he like just, he's like, he's such a tough guy. And then he's just walking around afterwards. He's like, and, and Charles is like going on a real guilt trip and just being like, oh, you guys need to lock me up. You guys, like, I need to go to jail for all the things I say. He's like, hey, we're in this together, blah, blah, blah. Look at me. I lost an arm, and I'm just to save you. We're, we're friends, and blah, 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 blah. And everyone's like, yay, we're all <laughs> friends. And then he just collapses. Oh, God, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> yeah. He's a great character. <laughs> um, but yeah, then they go to the exposition dump. Then we, uh, were there like, we gotta come up with a plan. We gotta, we gotta do something. And they're like, what if we come out of hyperspace before we get to the planet and we send a message ahead of time we'll send it to Ares' mom who can send it to the cop that Olger's brother was working with to expose the 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 congressman senator whatever and then you know maybe we'll be okay because our our high powered originals might try to kill us again yep and they do, and there's this tense moment when they get back with these ships in orbit, and it's like, oh, geez, it's a bunch of black helicopter-looking ships with guns pointed at them. And they're like, oh, God, are we going to die? I don't know. And then the king gets arrested, and the person who killed Sarah yeah, got arrested, and they're like, guess what? You're going down. The entire world is going to get turned upside down because we got all the info now yep uh huh and so yeah they fly him back in and everything's like yeah hey you're back it's cool everything's good we 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 arrested everybody I was hoping there was gonna be a little bit more confrontation but hey I'm good with this good all the things that you wanted to happen out. to them happened and all the yeah. thing and all the good things that they deserve like the cast of the astro all the things that they wanted and in, in, in their lives they find and it's well deserved and gratifying yep they're all famous doing a bunch of stuff turns out oh we should mention this because i was kind of right and but very wrong at the same time when uh i was saying like well what if paulino was like there for way longer than we thought turns out yeah. she was <laughs> not nearly yeah. to the point that i was saying so what happened with history because apparently we were thinking, oh, everyone came from Earth to Astra like four years ago. They did not. The government and everybody else decided, hey, we're going to turn the clocks back 100 years. And it'll be 1963, and then we'll just say there was a nuclear war, and that's why the world's all torn up. So all the kids who were born here will just grow up in that. 
and we'll rebuild everything and we'll and everybody's gonna lie which again i don't buy i'm just like listening to them say that i'm like bullshit uh but everyone's gonna lie and say that a nuclear war happened that world war three and then we were all just gonna rise from the ashes and blah 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 and then the lie was perpetuated over the years till it's 2063 technically it is 20 2163 yep but yep yeah and paulina is 140 years old <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which she, she does not take greatly. it well. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, hey, she she's looking pretty good for a hundred and forty year old. She she's looking pretty foxy for someone in her second century. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so creepy, but I don't know any other scenario I'd ever be able to say that. But yeah, um, we also got Foonie's puppet back, and that was probably the funniest the puppet's ever been. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. Now then what? They got interviewed by a bunch of people. Kanata wrote a book. Yep. He had a special arm for himself. Everyone's yeah, that Zach designed. Yeah, because of course he would. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Kittery, I guess, isn't going to be a doctor. She's going to be a model. But then Charles is also a model, and he's much more popular. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and he's the king of Vix- Vixalania. What's what's the country called? Vixia. 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 That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was like a, a, something a little more elaborate. Um. But yeah, I guess since he's a clone of the king, and there's no one else in line because they're either dead or in jail, it's like, yeah, I guess you're the king now. And I'm just like, is is he just this is the same king from before? <laughs> no one had a problem. why didn't we decide to maybe go into a democratic state i don't know but he did give up power like directly after getting it so good for him and you know tore down the walls and opened it up to everybody and they're they're everyone's relearning their history because apparently yeah. and again not everybody had kept quiet because there were a lot of people who were like figuring out hey our history is bs yeah so anti-government protests, whole bunch of stuff. I guess they're on the verge of some new developments happening for their history, and that's a big turning point for them, which is great, and these kids did great in doing it. And Olgar's off being a journalist, learning how to do a bunch of... There's a, there's a time skip at the end. should mention yeah. that. Um, it doesn't say what everyone does. I mean, we know someone's already a king. And, uh, yeah, Olgar does a journalism... A uh, Keetery and Zach uh, are married. What? A uh, Keetery and Zach are married. Oh, we knew that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. That um, was confirmed the, a while ago. And Foonie's in high school. She's the same age that the show started. Yeah, she's happy Kittery now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what else? Uh, Paulina. You and who the... was a famous singer. What's up? Yeah, I was wondering. I forgot her name. Yeah. Um, But she's doing that she's very famous everybody's mm-hmm. doing very successful and and pauline is like a professor now i guess because she's 140 years old and uh yeah she knows things <laughs> yeah she's one of the no. only people that knows the true history of what earth was yeah and Kanada and aries are engaged oh my god yes they are <laughs> oh my goodness it's about time <laughs> yep. um i mean he wanted to hold her hand before his arm got ripped off <laughs> <laughs> um, and he went to ask Charles yeah. if he can marry uh aries because technically that's his daughter <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah weird <laughs> that was funny though <laughs> yeah uh yeah, we don't really a... know what luke is up to but i guess they're doing their thing olgar's yeah. staying over maybe they're they're gonna be a thing who knows that's honestly Room for fan fiction i thought the whole time like when they were like the whole conflict that happened between them at first like and then the that they became like good f- well them becoming good friends and then the conflict that happened but then it was like they were still mm-hmm. good friends and then like Every time after that, when I saw them interact together, I was like, "Okay, there's a little thing going on here. I can see it." Going. 
yeah, I could see it. And then, and then when, yeah, Luca was like, oh, Olgar stayed over, like, last night. Yeah, and I was... It was, and like, I, almost an offhanded kind of, like, oh, God, that guy's constantly running around doing all the sort of stuff. He was so pooped he had to stay at my place last night. I don't know, but I was like, hmm. <laughs> I mean, hey, those were the first pair of boobs you ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. He can work with the rest. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's, I don't know what he's investigating. He's just interviewing people. I don't know if there's like an investigative journalism or if he just has a column now or something. He went to go see his dad and his dad's still a dick. Yeah. Um, the yeah. closure. That gave us the answers that we needed about what his brother was investigating. I mean, we kind of knew, but it was just, I guess, confirmation. Yeah. Um. Oh, Kanata is captain of his own ship because with the millions and millions he made off of um, uh, the book that he wrote, he he bought the Astra ship, and now Zack is his guy, and Charles just showed up to join the team, I guess. Well, Charles was like, I'll be your right-hand man. It's like, dude, I was joking when I said that. <laughs> but then he actually did come through. Yeah, and they're off to explore more. They're, they they have a Star Trek ending where they're like, they're going boldly where no man has gone before. And it's yep. just the three of them now. Like, why don't you have any more crew? At all. Um... Oh, there was one scene, like, right before they're gonna land, where they're all, like, just huddled up, and they're like, hey, we did it, we made it home, we're, everything, you know, we made it, ah, what was, what was your, what do you remember the most from this trip, and everyone's going around like, oh, I remember, uh, when we almost crashed, and I remember, you know, when we got stranded, and I remember when this happened, or when this person was singing, or to, I remember when you, when you saved me with your arm. I remember when you saved me with your arm. <laughs> it's like, it's constantly just talking about his arm. It's like, at some point, I thought he was just gonna be like, can we please stop talking about my arm? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's ripped off. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. They kind of went full like sentimental ending. Wasn't a big action showcase, but it was it was deserved and it worked for for the series. And I liked it. Yeah. What are our final thoughts on the series cuz I don't think we're going to I I'm doubting there's going to be a sec- season 2. What else is there to do? Yeah. I I think they wrapped up everything perfectly. I mean, uh, they could maybe do an OVA episode where they show the success of their adventures, but honestly, I don't think it's really even that necessary. So I, I'd say it's it yeah. was a very good show with good pacing, good characters, good drama, just everything around was yeah. great. It's a rare gem nowadays. I almost cried. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what part? I don't know, like the when they were coming home, I guess. Uh, I was like tearing up. <laughs> Only person not in jail is Aries' mom. Yeah, and then towards person. and then towards the end there when they were like showing everyone all like grown up and doing their own thing, I almost cried again. <laughs> <laughs> you really got connected to these characters. Yeah, it was a good show. Okay, it was. I'm not saying that you don't have a right to to be emotional about this. This is a good show and it had a good ending, and I'm happy that I watched this. Like me too. I'm glad is... you guys picked this out and invited me to go on this podcast so I can watch it with you guys. Like this is the whole reason I I, I wanted to do this podcast because I haven't watched a lot of anime before we did this. I just like been you know whatever. Maybe I caught something every now and then, but it's like I wanted to start watching stuff more regularly, and I didn't know anything that was coming out and that's kind of stuff i'm like i wouldn't have watched this had we not been doing this so i'm happy that we're doing this yeah <sighs> part of me feels like we should like go over everything that happened in the series but i feel like you know what we, we've gone over like this has been consistently the one that we go most in depth with 
Yeah. Yep. So I feel like everything that's been said has been said. So if you need more information of the overall series and the overall thoughts on our on the series, you know, check out some of our other episodes. But this is a yay. I'd recommend this to people. How about you guys? Oh, oh definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, this fans is a good fan show. Yeah, viewers of our show, whatever you do, just tell people about this show. Spread the word. Yeah. Not to the point where they're like, hey, this needs a sequel. Because it doesn't. Oh, oh, yeah. But give it a watch if you haven't. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Should we move on? Yeah. Yes, guess so. Okay, the emotional train keeps rolling because we got some other episode we got some episodes of steins gate with uh i mean we've talked about this we're in the in the heavy part of the series yep so these two episodes last time uh we had two episodes with revolving around suzaha like gab yep. mentioned earlier this time we get an episode for ferris and an episode for ruka yep, yep. And they have to give up a lot. Not to say that Suzuha didn't. Everyone's like, just like, hey, you know that thing you really wanted so bad and then you finally got it? Guess what? Now we have to take it away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, because, um, yeah, because of the D-mails and, you know, we have to turn back time in order to try and save my Yuri. It, yeah, it's- and, and a big part of that is finding the IBN 5100. They had the beginning of the series, but lost due to the D-mails. And the only way to do that... Oh, and get to the uh, the, the convergence point, the 1% line. Um, the only way to do that is to go backwards through each of the D-mails that change the world line. And undoing whatever they did. So, they're getting around to Ferris's thing. And Ferris, whenever she changed the world line she completely rewrote the town yeah um used to be a moe mecca and now it's not and they're they're finding out like you know hey what happened how did it how did it all go down and slowly but surely after a a weird chase scene with some very overzealous online gamers <laughs> I'm surprised those guys knew how to run if they're, if they're that into games um, <laughs> no offense to anyone <laughs> uh, yeah we find out that Ferris's and I, we, we kind of guessed this Ferris's text saved her father's life yeah Um, when she was little her dad got on a plane that he shouldn't have and it crashed and he died and then you know she inherited his money and and did whatever she wanted with it in the new world line she stopped her father from getting on the plane he survived he did his thing he was there with his daughter and whenever she was like hey i want to open a maid cafe she he was like ha hell no you're not (laughs) <laughs> and as a result <laughs> changed the entire town thing is uh, Ferris is starting to remember both world lines so it's not just Okabe who can do this everyone else to some degree can do it he can just do it more readily I think we're starting to figure out Um. so yeah she's she's faced with a really big decision of like do I save my Yuri or do I have my father yeah Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, this is... You know, I feel like some people use the term like, wow, this is a real Sophie's choice. This is literally a Sophie's choice. I gotta say, too, like, throughout the series, Ferris hasn't really had a lot of screen time, but, like, this episode makes you feel for her and makes you understand her motivation and where she's coming from and feel bad for when she ultimately decides to reverse time. And she even says... My father died 10 years ago. This was just a fantasy. This was just borrowed time. And it's like, oof. Right? The feels. Yeah. yeah. That that hurt. I mean, depending on how you look at it, you could argue 
yeah, it was a fantasy, and that it wasn't real because it wasn't the original world line, but when you think about it from a multiverse perspective, this is, it was just as legitimate of a world line as the other one was. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure that was her way of justifying what was happening and what she was doing. But still, you can't take away that. Like, that's just the biggest sacrifice that she could make. For yeah, something that even she Oda, didn't yeah. even know was going to work. Yeah. And even Okabe is like, point, I, can't, I can't force her to do this. Yeah, I mean, even he was trying to, like, figure out a way, like, well, oh, God, what could I do to... Is there an alternative? Is there a way that we can have it both ways? You know, if we uh, change one little thing or do this. Oh, the reason that it affects the IBM 5100 is because and this is part of the reason that we were that they went to Ferris in the beginning. Ferris's father was a businessman from a while ago and he had an IBM 5100 that he used um for business and I keep forgetting is it IBM or IBM? IBM. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> I was just like, is it is it IBM as in the as in the company, or is this IBM as in just a, a computer model? I, I I forget sometimes. But anyway, I don't have the subtitles, so I can't read it. <laughs> he had it. He gave it to someone else because he received it from someone else. It's it, it like he it, he was in the chain of the IBM. But in this world line, the IBM went missing. Because Ferris was kidnapped by someone, they had a ransom, and then someone was willing to buy the IBM for an absorbent amount of money. And he was just like, yeah, sure, and I'm going to get my daughter back with that money. Which, you know, as a father, yeah, I get it. Not as a father, I'm not a father, but <laughs> I, could, <laughs> yeah. I understand his thought process there. It's a fucking computer, who gives a shit? Um, but yeah, so that... That's how that all ties into what they're looking for. Suzuha did find the IBM 5100, gave it to Ferris's dad, and after they fixed the world line a little bit, they fixed the world line a little bit, they didn't fix everything. Uh, Ferris's dad's dead, everything's back to Moe culture. Uh, the IBM did go next down the line to um, the Yanabayashi Shrine with Ruka's dad. Which is where they found it originally. Yeah. So, then they have to go talk to Ruka. And I believe we went over what happened to Ruka before. <laughs> yep. Yep. Ruka, Ruka changed their gender. Mm-hmm. So Okabe tells her that you have to be a dude again in order to save my Yuri. And they that they are devastated. I'm like, yep, that is a devastating thing to tell someone. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's compounded by the fact that apparently everyone tells Okabe, yeah, you know why she doesn't like it when you say like she's supposed to be a boy right because she's in love with you yeah which i guess is a good time to bring up the fact that this is this was based on kind of a harem anime or a harem visual novel yeah and we're currently yeah. going through everyone's route yep yeah uh so it's about time this dating sim got a date <laughs> uh because ruka ruka is willing to do it which is very brave of them. They're only willing to do it if Okabe goes out with them. Which yep. this was a funnier episode, despite the heavier side of the um series. Mostly Dude, because of social Karisu, inequities. Karisu yeah. and Dar yeah. and Karisu and Daru made that episode for they me. Did. I was cracking up throughout the entire episode. <laughs> yeah. But what can we say? They're all hopeless virgins. 
Well, he's trying to play matchmaker to make sure that he doesn't mess up his date with Ruka. And then and he and she literally does the old trope, of following them everywhere, trying to make sure that everything's going okay. Yes, they're literally following them around on this date. After she goes about like changing his wardrobe and making sure it's like, hey, don't talk about this and do this and blah 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 blah. And like I'm like, it's like we know where this is gonna end. Where it's like. Hey, uh, the best way to date someone is to be yourself, which we eventually yeah. get there. But we got to have some hilarity among all of them trying to figure out how to date people because none of them have has ever been successful in the romance department. Which I guess their standard for that is to have sex. Which I'm like, you don't have to have sex to be, call it a successful date. But, yeah. you know, I don't know. I guess that's their standard. <laughs> In which case, they're all failures. <laughs> um, there was yeah. something I kind of wanted to bring up, because like, they do kind of bring up... Uh... Oh, God, Okabe, you're going out with a high school student. Ooh. And uh, I wanted to look it up because I was like, I thought I knew how old these characters were, but I wanted to make sure, I wanted to be like, is this weird? Because I kind of thought that Okabe was like 20 or something. No. Nope. We know he's in college, but I think I looked on the Wikipedia, he's actually 18, so he's like a college freshman. Oh, yeah. Really? Okabe's, yeah, yes. Okabe's 18. Okabe My... and Karisu are 18, Daru is 19, Suzaha was 18, Mayuri 16, and Ruka and Ferris. And Ruka's are... also... Wait, Ruka's 17? Yep. In either case, it's 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 not as weird as I thought it was Was whenever they make it sound like that. It's actually not weird at all. No. Yeah. Like, they're like, what, one year apart? The, who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew I knew people who like when they were a senior in high school they dated a junior and then yeah they went to college the next year and they were dating a high school student technically. It's not weird. <laughs> but I guess some people seem to think it is. I knew freshmen in high school that were dating seniors. So. <laughs> okay, that was weird. Um But yeah, so Ruko requires a date from the old Shoin Kyoma. And uh it it's awkward as hell because I don't know, maybe Ruka knows what she's doing, but Okabe just has no idea how to date or be social nice. in a non mad scientist way. Ugh. And I think they like they even kind of bring it up as like, you know, I I have no problem making small talk with people, but suddenly we're on a date and everything is weird. <laughs> yeah ain't that the truth <laughs> um yeah they get through the date it's bad it didn't work it did it's did, it didn't go well and then Mayuri shows up because she saw them running around together and she's like whoa hey Ruka got a boyfriend or something and they're like, oh, that was Okabe. He's like, that couldn't have been Okabe. He was tall, dark, and mysterious, and blah, 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 and dressed a different way, and acted totally different, nothing like Okabe. And Okabe's like, oh my god, you're right. She was in love with me, but I came as a completely different person. I have to go put my lab coat on, run over to their house, and, and we'll just do some weird uh, sword drills for the evening, and that'll be our date. <laughs> Lo and behold, it works. Because, again, moral of the story, kids, be yourself, and people yeah. will like you better. But, yeah, they uh, they go about that. They have a good time. Share some tender moments. We should also mention, like, I'm pretty sure Ferris is into Okabe, too. I think they all are. Yeah. Each, each Can we tell girl, that it's based on a harem game? Each girl in the visual novel gets a separate ending, depending yeah. on what the game yeah um but yeah so they share their moment and then they reset the clock and 
<laughs> I like how they like did call back to like that first introduction of Ruka where it's like Ruka, the height of feminine grace and beauty. And a dude. <laughs> yeah. So they fix that. And uh at that point Yeah, there the IBN was at the Yanabiyashi shrine. But it got stolen or something, or it went missing at some point. And they don't know where it went. So now they gotta go back further. And the next one... And they gotta do Moyoika. Or Moyoika. Moyoika, yeah. They gotta figure out what her text was about. See if they can reverse it. See if they can figure out something. See what she needs in return. And try to... Just try to fix it. Which, you know, is, if you think about it, probably not going to be very fun based on... Yeah, the fact that they've been shooting people lately. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yep. What you got to do is what you got to do next. So far, every time that they've changed the world wide back, the, the numbers have gotten closer to the 1% convergence thing or divergence thing and they've been adding hours that Mayuri has been able to live yeah so clearly they're affecting it in a positive manner presumably they keep going on this course everything will turn out fine we hope what did you guys what were you guys thoughts on on these because I think we this is actually probably the most detailed description we've done of an of an episode so far with the show it's. I think this these two episodes were prime examples of adding to the main plot while also going on different side stories that was well developed and handled really well. I agree. Yeah. Um. Because we'd already kind of learned about them a little bit. We'd already kind of we knew who Ruka and uh, Ferris were. And they were kind of just side characters, kind of whatever, just sort of there. But they added a nice little flavor to the scenes that they were in. And now it's like we get a whole dish of them. And it's it's fantastic. And it's a good... I like, the, I like it because it's almost like... These episodes are almost like vignettes a little bit. And it kind of works for the series. Because it's it's like having a filler episode without having a filler episode. Yeah, which is like such a weird thing to say. That's why we all. That's why we said the first half of the series was building up and building up, and now everything's being paid off in the second half. Yeah, it's like they're gonna make you like everyone in the first half. That way, you care a ton in the second half. What happens to them? And it's it's emotionally manipulative, but it's it's very effective. <laughs> Um. Yeah. What else? I I think I'm out of things to say. What about What about you guys? Um. Prepare for more waterworks in the weeks ahead. That's all I'm gonna say. God, dude, we know. We know where this show's going. It's already Just gone for... there. <sighs> <sighs> Nothing else to say on this. Mm-hmm. I think I'm good for, for this week. Okay. I know, because we don't yeah. want to go like into spoiler territory for the next one. Alright. Uh, we should mention that... I forget. Like, I I don't... We're seeing hints of Karisu and Okabe getting a little bit closer during some of these episodes. I think it's mostly just because he, Okabe's finally asking for help. Like, a big a big point for him... Because we mention a lot of like what the other characters are going through. But I think Okabe's big character arc, at least this half of the series, is uh, him learning to accept help from others and even ask for help. Instead of just... I wouldn't say that he pushes people away, but he kind of puts up a lot of walls. You know, actually, there is one more thing I wanted to talk about. This was something for, we forgot to talk about a uh, couple weeks ago. Um, they revealed why Okabe started his mad scientist persona to begin with, to protect my right. ear. Away. Yes. 
Yes. That because was last week, was, wasn't it? I it was either last week or two weeks ago, but hmm. but it was basically Mayuri lost her grandmother and she was devastated by it to the point where she basically was about to commit suicide and Okabe is like you can't you can't just leave me I'm your hostage you're my hostage now and he just rolled with it and that's been a, a facade to basically protect them as friends or something like that yeah yep but yeah like I think and that is part of his, like, I guess, character arc in this is, like, protecting others and learning to... But, like, it's it's kind of taking down his his barriers, his walls, and, like, the stuff that he's... Because, like, yeah, he started that to help uh, Mayuri, but I think Kyoin Kyoma is also kind of, like, a little... Is a persona for him to keep himself from, like, getting overly attached to certain people and making it... And making himself vulnerable. Yeah. And... That's kind of going away a little bit, and he's kind of we're, we're kind of seeing Okabe for who he is. He's a good person, despite his how many times he says he's a mad scientist and a lunatic and all this other stuff. No, he's a good person. Um, yeah. So we'll see how that continues. We'll see how him and Karisu develop together a little bit because they're they've been they've been sharing a lot more lately. And he's started to respect her. Just respect her in general. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we'll see how that develops. We'll see how his other relationships develop. We'll see what happens with Mocha and everybody else. Because we got a lot of, a couple more time jumps to re reassess and figure out. Yeah. But yeah, so. Yeah. Episodes for next week. Copcraft, episode 11, right? Yeah. Uh, no Kanata. There's, there's no more Kanata. I am sad, too. Um, but since we're going to have a vacancy, we're thinking uh, to do Steins Gate. Uh, instead of just doing 19 and 20, we're going to do 19, 20, and 21. And then we'll finish the series the week afterwards. And then, you know, it'll be the second week of October. At that point, we'll probably be starting a lot of new shows then so yeah watch some extra steins gate i mean it's not like you're not gonna want to I mean, if you're if you're following us this much into it i mean you you're i'm surprised most people probably haven't just binged the rest of it already yeah yep i got close a couple times you keeping yourself uh keeping your resolve yeah good for you gav Good for you. Good for I all mean, of us. I mean, I have watched it before. Yeah, yeah that's, but like, that's true. You know it's going to happen. But, like, I also forget a lot because it's been a while since I've watched it. I get that. It's, it has been a while. But we'll see how the rest of it goes, and we'll see how the cop craft ends, and we'll see uh, if maybe we decide what we're going to watch for this fall anime season next week. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Anyway, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time.